everybody, Jerry Bellini here from Recycle Parts for Art and woohoo, the wristers are finished. Aren't they adorable? You must be sick to death of me talking about them by now. So they're done. But I loved working on them so much that I'm going to make another pair in this really pretty purpley color. Isn't that pretty? Because And this is cashmere too. I found this when I was cleaning. I don't clean. I meant when I was packing. Okay, so happy, um, happy week to you. This is vlog number seven, and I'm so excited to uh, continue to be here with you every week, and I really look forward to this time that I spend with you. So this morning, instead of coffee, I have a glass of water. <laughs> yeah, no coffee today. We'll see how that goes. So anyway, what should we talk about today? Well, all right. So we talked about the wristers. I want to talk about um, what I've been doing. So I have been packing. I was packing up a lot of stuff yesterday and uh, I was working on my uh, books. I have a cabinet in the kitchen. It's a vintage cabinet and it is full of antique books. And here's a pile of them back here. I'm going to try to put some of them in my Etsy shop. But I had, you know those um, file boxes? Uh, they're, I don't know, 15 inches by whatever. They're about that big. They have handles. Mine have covers. So I've been using them because books are heavy. You don't want to put too many in a box. I had to have at least a dozen boxes of books. Yeah. At least. I can't wait to see them at the other house. <laughs> Brian says, these are all for sale, right? And I went, no. Anyhow, so <laughs> while I was... Uh, going through the books, I came across this one, and uh, Elsie Dinsmore, and this book has very special meaning to me, and so I pulled it, pulled it out, and it was my mom's, and the story goes is that I would go over to her house, and I would see the book, and I would say, because it's green, too, and I love it, I would say, Mom, you need to let me have that book so I can do art in it, and she'd be like, no, that that's a nice book, that's that's a very old book. You know, I don't want you to wreck it. Anyway, eventually, um, she gave in, and um, I wrecked it. <laughs> so, um, I wrote a note in the front of the book. Dear Mom, I hope you don't mind. I colored in your book like I did when I was little and colored on the wall behind the sofa. I used red lipstick back then, and I actually remember doing it. I miss you. Love, Jerry. So... What I did, oh, and there, there's my mom's name, Ida Amanda Bellini. And um, I named uh, my daughter Amanda, is named after her, and I have a granddaughter named Ida, uh, too, that uh, is named after my mom. So what I did is um, I gessoed some of the pages and then uh, drew flowers on top. And I just randomly go through the book and do it in some pages. And there's colored pencil, and I used some Tombow marker and there's like tons more on the front. Some are just drawn, some are uh, sketched, and I experimented and I just, you know, I just had some fun. Had some fun with it. And this one, it looks like I did the day she died. I do, I remember actually making that when I was sitting next to her bed um, drawing. I just wanted to be close to her. Anyway, um, I wanted to tell you, grab a book, grab an old book, and make sure that the pages are in halfway decent um, shape. You know, like some of the pages, when you open them, they're very brittle, and they're very dark, and if they, if they fall apart, when you touch them, you don't want to use that. This one's old enough, but not too old, and so it's perfect, and of course, because it was uh, my mom's, and it has a little story, I love it. So I'm going to keep it out. I'm going to keep it on my table and uh, doodle in it every so often. So I wanted to show you that. And also, when I was digging through my books, now this isn't an old book, but um, I came into my art room and I had some uh, old books in here too, and I came across this one. And this is a Strathmore uh, watercolor journal, and it's a rectangle shape. And I actually started, oh uh, gosh, this is from 2014. So this is like a while ago when I just started doing mixed media. I've always loved flowers, love them. And so um, I just started drawing little folk arty kind of flowers and just playing with my supplies. And I believe, 
Can I turn the page? I believe that um, it's watercolor paint, colored pencils, and Tombow markers, I believe is what I was using. So, yeah, I just kind of went through and did, you know, different things. All right, I'm not going to show you the whole book. It's, it's too hard to sit here and, and hold it up. But I don't know. If you want to see it, I'll... I'll do a flip. Just just mention in the comments below. I'll do a flip. Probably take me five minutes. All right. So because you know I love you know how much I love flowers. So I want to tell you a story about this. And also uh, this is for Carol Martin. Uh, I, I was watching her vlog the other day, and um, I'm gonna I'll leave her link uh, in the description below. She does YouTube videos, and she loves flowers. Okay. So she was showing us. Um, uh, it was like a Zentangle flower book that she got for Christmas. And it was so cool, and it reminded me, I just got this one recently, of this book. And so I was in Hobby Lobby and saw this, and it says, How to Draw Modern Fla Florals. And it was wrapped in cellophane. So I said, to happen to be a salesperson there, I said, you know, I'd really like to see the inside of that book before I buy it. It's, you know, it's not cheap. It was $18. And... Um, she said, oh, I can't, I can't take this cellophane off there. She said, I'd have to put it back on. Really? <laughs> I mean, but how, how are people going to want to know if they want to buy the book or not, if they can't see it? I thought that was such a stupid uh, response. So I didn't buy the book. And um, it was on my mind, right? So I went home and I went, oh, I really wanted to see what was in that book. So I looked it up on Amazon, and I think you could look through a page or two on Amazon. And I realized that it is exactly the kind of book that I wanted. All right, so these are realistic flowers, and the flowers that I just showed you in my other book, they're folk flowers. So this is different. I wanted to learn how to do the realistic ones. I follow an artist, and you may be familiar with her. Her name is Kathleen, and I, I can't pronounce her last name, so I won't even try. It starts with a P. She goes by the um, name of Kathleen Studio 318, and I'm going to leave her... Instagram link in my description below. I think she might have a YouTube channel, but she really, she's Instagram. She's on there all the time. She does lives on there, and she'll actually show you how she draws. She'll draw something on there. And I found her uh, on Periscope. That was a couple years ago. And she uses a ballpoint pen. Oh my gosh. And she, oh my, her art is fantastic. And she has an Etsy store and she sells her stuff there. But she makes it look so simple. So I've always been, it's piqued my interest. So it starts with something, a very simple shape. And then you see, and it keeps getting until you get more and more and more. I found, so I said, this is exactly what I need. Somebody to show me step by step. P.S. Meanwhile... I'm flipping through my YouTube. I watch a lot of YouTube. I love it. I'm flipping through my YouTube, and some this girl pops up. I'd never seen her before. And her channel, I don't even remember what she was doing on her channel, but most of the stuff really wasn't interesting to me. But I saw she was showing you how to draw a flower from, like, start like this. And I said, ooh, that's really interesting. So I watched, ah, oh, I loved it. I watched the whole thing start to finish, and I was hoping to myself that she would continue to do more flowers. I think I even mentioned it when I left her a comment that I really enjoyed it. So I will leave a link for her, too. And this was uh, probably at least two months ago that I saw her. So maybe she is doing more. I'm not sure. And I'm sorry I don't remember her name off the top of my head. So that was that. Was that. And, um, you know, I'm cleaning. I'm finding so many lovely things. It's fabulous. And I wanted to share some of the things. I've got this bag of junk in front of me. I just dumped it on my table. I wanted to share some of the things that I found. And I just realized I have my um, computer glasses on. So I'm going to change them. Here we are. These are the glasses you know me. These... These glasses I put on when I need to see my computer. So, in order to see what I'm doing here, I need these. All right. Do you have two pairs of glasses? Like several? I know I should get the trifocals. I've tried them. I can't wear them. I can't. I've tried them. I can't tell you how many times. They make me so dizzy and sick. Anyway, so here's what I find. I find this bag full of these amazing... 
I'm going to hold this up and see how this works. There might be some glare there. Uh, beads that I did in my bead store. We did classes. Can you see that? We did classes on these. And there's a, there's a bunch of them. Aren't they pretty? I hope there's no glare there. Yeah, you know when you look in the camera, you can hardly tell what you're doing. I think they're so beautiful. So we did a bunch of classes, and people, um, you know, made beaded jewelry with them. And, um, oh, look at this one. That's a big one, right? Fluffy. And then this one has... Uh, wax linen uh, wrapped around um, something at the end. So this one's really big. So I found this whole big bag um, full of these beautiful beads, and I thought I need to do I need to do a class um, with these. So it's <laughs> it's they're inspiring me. The stuff I'm finding is inspiring me. Um, I won't show you everything because there's a lot of stuff sitting here on my desk. But I did want to show you, um, I did want to show you these. Is that beautiful? Okay, that is bead embroidery. And you'll never guess what that is. Oh, maybe you will. It's a button. Okay, so ignore this, um, that's, that's the string. Ignore that. I had a price tag, uh, probably, or a, not a price tag, what am I saying? a tag on here to say what it was so just ignore that black string it's a button form so I have like thousands of these button forms I need to put them in my Etsy store so look look at this one isn't that gorgeous the burgundy and the green so that one's a little smaller see it's a little smaller so as I said I taught classes and I actually did um, an instruction sheet and I used to sell kits I found the kits I, I found the kits um, recently for this. So I think I might like clean it up and put it in my Etsy shop. Why not, right? Do you, do you think they're gorgeous? I think they're beautiful. And you know, I sold them with the button, with the metal button forms too, so everything was in the kit. And then I found this. Now this, I definitely have to hold something up. I'll hold up this piece of paper because this won't have any glare. Yeah, okay, so this is this is, um, I called it a spiraling icicle, and we hung it on our Christmas tree, or you could hang it in a window, or whatever, and just, I thought they were really pretty. We taught this as a class, too, and I made a handout for this. Well, I'm making another handout for it, an instructional thing. I'm beefing it up, because we had handouts in the store, but you didn't need photographs, because you were sitting right there with me. So I didn't need to have step-by-step -step photographs. So I'm trying to do that for this. And that's one of the things on my list of things to do for 2018 is to get um, an instruction kit for that. This is so much fun looking through this stuff, I have to tell you. All right. Moving right along. <laughs> so I have this little tiny dog, and you know it's cold. I live in Pennsylvania. It's really, really cold, and then it warms up a little bit. It's really, really cold. So I have this little tiny dog, Madison. She's about nine pounds, and I uh, have two dogs. Max, he's the one that you always hear barking. Madison doesn't do that. She's a good girl. We call her precious. So she's tiny, and she's always shivering, you know. So I had a jacket for her, and um, it just was getting a little too tight on her. And it really wasn't doing the job. It was just covering a little bit of her back. And it's been cold. So I thought, what am I going to do? I'm not going to run out to a pet store and look for a coat, you know, now. And uh, so <laughs> I've got bags of clothes I'm getting rid of, bringing them to the thrift store. And so I took an old sweater. Okay, here's the sweater. And I looked at it and I said, I can cut that apart and make a little coat for my dog. So over here, you know, this was the sweater and this was the body part. Okay, you see that? So I, I cut, when I cut the sweater, let me fold it in half so I can hold it better. When I cut the sweater, I just went, I cut it in like that too. And just, she looks so cute in it and it keeps her so warm. Recycling. You know I'm a big recycler. All right, so I wanted to show you that. What else? Hmm. 
I think I about covered it. No, I know what I wanted to tell you. Um, and this has nothing to do with art, but maybe it does because it will give you more time to spend on your art. I was having a chit-chat with uh, Hickety Pickety, that's Sonia, a friend of mine um, that I met through Instagram, and I will put a, a link for her. She makes YouTube videos in the description below. Anyway, we were chatting the other day. I was working on my wrister, and she was working on She does punch. Uh, so I'm going to have to try that, Sonia. Yeah, really. So anyway, she does punch embroidery, I think you call it. Um, so we were talking, and I don't know why the Instapot came up. Christmas came up. I got an Instant Pot for Christmas. I didn't ask for one. She says she got one, too. <laughs> she said it's the, it was the number one gift for Christmas this year. So um, I wanted a steamer, a rice steamer. I, I eat a lot of rice. And so I thought, well, what am I going to do with this Instant Pot? My kids told me, yeah, you can make rice, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, make long story just a little bit longer. I um, tried to make rice in it, and I I don't like to follow recipes, but I did. I had to read the book because it's a pressure cooker, and I was afraid it was going to blow up and kill me. So I did read the directions, and it's and I eat brown rice. Okay, so it's a little different. With, there's a rice button on there. You just put the rice in and press the button if you're making white rice. But if you're making brown. You have to do a little different. So it said put a cup and a quarter of water, broth, a little butter, and you know, press the button and cook it for so many minutes. I, I thought I almost broke my teeth on it. It was, it was terrible. So I was so disappointed. So I said, I'm going to try it again. I must be doing something wrong. Everybody's raving about this Instant Pot. So the next time I put a little bit more water in, same thing. It was still, it was, it was crunchy. So the third time was a charm. I put two cups of broth, a little bit of butter. I cooked it for 27 minutes, because now remember, it's brown rice. And you say, why don't you just cook it on the stove? It, first of all, you cook it on the stove, it's 45 minutes. And also, you got to keep checking it, because I don't know about you, if you make brown rice, it starts to, when it gets to the bottom and the water runs out, it starts to spit, and now all the stuff is all over my cooktop. Not to mention, you got to pay attention to it. This Instant Pot, you throw the stuff in, you, you push the button, and you go, and if it's finished cooking, it turns off, and it's just sitting there, and you can be in your art room, and who cares what's going on in the kitchen, right? So that's why I said it is art-related. So I wanted to, <laughs> just wanted to tell you about my Instant Pot. Well, I know a lot of you are vegan and vegetarian. Um, we do eat a little bit of meat, and we get it at a... Um, a high-end, um, high-end, is that the word? A butcher, we get it from a butcher. So it's, uh, it's, it's good meat, if you're gonna eat meat. Anyway, I made a chuck roast in this thing. What is all I can have, is all I have to say, okay? I put a, I think I put a cup of broth. Um, it has the ability to saute right in the pot. So you press the saute button and you uh, sear all the sides. Okay, it took me five minutes. And then you pour in a cup of beef broth, and then I cut up an onion and put just put it right on top of the, the roast, the chuck roast. Put the lid on, cooked it for, pushed this button for 70 minutes, okay? And when I came back, I, I can't even tell you how good it was. Oh my gosh. It was the best pot roast I have ever had and I cook mine in a, a crock pot and I thought it was amazing in the crock pot forget it I would give you thirty dollars for that meal if I was going to a restaurant that's how good it was all right so that, that's it Jer you've rambled on long enough so I'm really trying to get some packing done husband said he would um, take some of the furniture over to the little house and I'm a little apprehensive about it, to be honest with you. I'm afraid I might need something, and then what am I going to do? Because we're not moving. It's not like we're moving over there tomorrow. It's probably going to be. Oh, I can't even say how when it's going to be. I'm. He says now he's saying March, but you know what? I'm going to say I'm going to say April. Okay. Oh, I just want to get out of here. <laughs> so anyway, I'm afraid, but he's. Trying, he's pressuring me. 
so I better I better get started so that's what I'm doing I'm doing a lot of that I'm working on my website that kind of thing my business too I'm very busy by the time I go to bed at night I'm exhausted yeah and I sleep like a log Ola except for a few nights when I don't on that note friends I love chatting with you I love being here I love showing up for you on Tuesdays I love your comments please continue to leave them I'm getting to know so many of you um, and I appreciate your time um, and your support and your encouragement so on that note I will say I hope you have a blessed day full of love and recycled art and I will see you again soon bye